Kelly. Hello. Um, we don't have a microphone, so I'm going to speak quite loud. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me. Um, so I wanted to just talk to you about going from Namibia through to Zambia on the borders. In our case, we went to Katima Mulilo, um, which was great, actually. Uh, it was a bit, uh, we had a few moments, but it was actually very good. Just quickly run through it with you. Um, it's always nice to actually have this information, or it would be nice for us to have it all before we left. Um, it would have saved us probably a good couple of hours at the border. So basically, the Namibia side is easy. You just go through to immigration, they stamp you up. Make sure that you've paid your um, natus fees when you arrived into Namibia. Then you leave. It's a bit confusing, you just ask people where to go, there's a lot of touts there, just ignore them and go through to Zambia. And when you get to the Zambia, the arrival, well it will say departures, there's a, quite a lot of stuff that you need to do. So the first thing is you go to the health check. They'll check your COVID certificate. Um, you need a PCR, which we got at Katima Mulilu Hospital uh, for 680 Rand, uh, so dollars. Then you, he checks you out, he gives you a little piece of paper, that little piece of paper needs to go with you to immigration. Immigration, they stamp you in. Um, in my case, I had to get a visa because I'm from New Zealand. South Africans don't need visas, so it's easy for Dion, they just stamp the sink. For me, I had to pay a 50 US dollar um, entry fee. Make sure that you have that. They don't take cards, they don't take watches, it's only 50 US dollars. Um, I did need change, so we weren't particularly excited to give it to me. So if you have a $50 note, rather use that. Um, also bear in mind, make sure there's no tears in that note, which I'll explain to you now. Then you go back to the health check. That gets signed off, you're good. Then the next place you go to is the customs, where you pay the customs import fees, which for the bike is quacha. You have to have quacha. Don't go there without quacha, they don't take cards. So that's something that I learned the hard way, is A, that you need to have quacha with you. Um, B, you can change it at the bank, but it's a slow process, and the rates aren't that great, um, and you can't change the million dollars. So basically, I had to use some of my US dollars to get quacha, which was very frustrating, because it was quite a process to even get the US dollars. Um, yeah that's something else try and get US dollars before you actually leave your own country uh, so yeah you pay that make sure you have your travel insurance for your vehicle your papers your registration and your name if it's not on your name you need to have some proof of the bank or you know things like that so that they know everything's legit that's pretty straightforward if you've got the papers have them in your hand make sure it's up to date and make sure it says cover Zambia or wherever you're going. Then you go to the Interpol guy. The police clearance is basically the Interpol guy. There is no police certificates required. Um, there seems to be some of the other borders people are having trouble with that, but not at this one. And it's very obvious, you don't need one. The Interpol guy picks your papers again, he looks at your bike, makes sure your VIN and everything matches. Then you go back, he stamps it off, and you're, you're sort of like sorted. It's very simple, that sort of part of it. Then you go to another counter, which is for the <laughs> road tolls. If the guy actually decides to actually work, we waited 45 minutes for him to come to the desk. And if you need to know his name so you can call him, his name is Kelvin. <laughs> so Kelvin was not very efficient that day. And then we have to pay your toll fees in advance, which is 20 US dollars. Again, you don't take quacha, you don't take machines, you need 20 US dollars. Brand new yes. dollars. Yes, and he refuses to accept my $20 because it had a little tear in it. A millimeter tear, a little, That's little tear. That's another thing. Make sure your, your US dollars are pristine, guys. Like Out of a frame. Yeah, because they're not accepting them at the border at the moment. So, so you pay that. Then you have to go and pay your third party insurance, which for us was 520 quacha. Again, make sure you have quachas and no machines um, that covers you for third party accidents and things inside the country we are we have our own insurance they don't accept it despite a long discussion and explanation and a lot of chatting and chatting with the, the boss lady who was actually quite unpleasant and condescending to me that's fine we paid it 
Um, you can try and do that in advance if you can. It's Camisa. You can do it online apparently. Don't know a lot about that, but that's something you can look into. Um, then you, once you've done that, you, you are sorted. Then you get all your stuff together. Then you quickly go to um, out the exit. Before you, before you leave, you have to also pay council levy, which is 50 quatches. Make sure they give you a stamp and everything. So there's a lot of paperwork. Keep it. Make sure you get your receipts for everything. Then as you're exiting, then there's one final check where they check everything's paid and then they check your bike against all the paperwork. It's quick work. Um, so yeah, pretty easy border. Down Three hours. No, it was actually four hours. Four hours, okay. Like two hours was wasted for me trying to change money and waiting for Calvin. Um, so it wasn't too bad. Um, <laughs> Dion got very frustrated. So he sort of left and I sort of carried on with things. With Calvin. Yeah. Um, just and they try. give you that disc. They give you a disc for your yeah. windscreen. So, yeah. yeah. I'll explain to you. It has to be on your windscreen. And when, that, yeah. we'll talk about that in the next video, actually, about what it's like in Zambia itself. Um, so hopefully that helps you. Like I said, the main thing for me, make sure you have US dollars, that's pristine. Make sure you have enough quacha. It's just going to save you time and you just can't change your Namibian dollars to quacha at the border. Well, not on the Zambia side. The bank's only open at 8.30. Possibly you can change on the South African side, um, the Namibian side, um, your dollars to quacha, but I don't know. So if you're planning on leaving very early, just bear in mind that the banks are only open later. And yeah. Any comments and questions, just leave them in the link or the, the section below, right? Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. Yeah, Zambia.
Welcome to the Kelly and Dion show. <laughs> Let's check if this thing works today. Yeah, it hasn't been working. Um, so it's bright and early. Friday, 26th of March, 8 o'clock. Um, so, Zambia. Yeah, so we've just gone through a lot of things. we are making a video. Um, there wasn't a lot of talking on it. For some reason we sort of didn't do that. Except so in the beginning, going through the border. Yeah, so now we just want to catch you up. So basically, yeah, it's day six in Zambia. Um, it's starting to cool down, actually. It's actually quite chilly this morning. Um, it's nice, it's bearable. It's actually lovely. Uh, so we went through the border at uh, Katima Mulilo, and then we went to Livingston. Um, and as you do when you go to Livingston, you go to Victoria Falls, which I absolutely Oh, I loved it. <laughs> well, at least we got a free shower and a bath. So. Yeah, we were getting a bit stinky, so it was good. Yeah. Um, and then we stayed there for a couple of nights. Uh, it, it was really nice. We stayed at a place called Butterfly Apartments, and they um, gave us a discount because the first night the room was a little small. It was tiny. <laughs> it was like... I think my head and my feet touched either side of the walls. Yeah. Um, and okay. then, yeah, at the moment, uh, Zambia experience, has experienced a lot of flooding. So there's a lot of places that's closed and roads that's blocked and cut off and that. So we don't really know where to go. So we looked at the map and we're like, oh, let's try Lake Kariba. So we went to see Avonga and Lake Kariba, which was fantastic. Um, for me especially because I love the forest. And we basically rode through the forest the whole way. Um, I've never seen someone take so many pictures of trees. I love the baobabs. Baobabs. <laughs> I keep saying baobabs. Baobab trees. Um, and then we got to the lake and it was very really beautiful. And we got to stay at Eagle's Rest for a really good price. So thank you, Tom. Um, obviously, budget is a thing everywhere we go. So every cent helps. Mm. Um, in terms of budgeting, it's a bit easier for us because Zambia is actually quite a bit cheaper than Namibia. You get a lot more for your crutches. Um, so it's really nice in that sense. Um, so beer is cheap. Yeah, oh, beer is very cheap, mm, which is a bit dangerous, like six rand beer or something crazy. And then, um, so we went to Siavonga and Lake Kariba, and then Tom suggested we go to this place on the lower Zambezi called Mokuyu Camp, run by Kennedy. So we did. It was a really cool experience. The road was quite hectic getting in there, but like you're up when you're riding and then you see all the elephant dung everywhere, it's a little nerve wracking because you, you can't see in front of you a lot of the time. So there was a good chance we were going to come across some elephants. 
fence. Yeah. Well, we didn't. But we they were there. They were there. Yeah, like we could see like fresh dung everywhere. And so we stayed on the Zambezi for the night. It was really cool. Hippos like grunting. Yeah, all night. you could hear the hippos. And then at night, um, the one hippo comes out onto the campsite and eats the grass. So I saw that. Grazes. Yes. Eats the grass, grazes. And then, yeah, you could hear like lions at the Lower Zambezi Park just up the road and hyenas and yeah and oh and then um, David took me on the river quickly to see some elephants so that was pretty spectacular I loved it so yeah we did that for the night and then we came back same road not much to say except for um, you'll, you'll see a video um, a truck fell over and there was Marinda everywhere and the locals it was Christmas. When did we hit that pothole after that? Eh? Yeah, and we had quite a bad pothole. You've got to be very careful on the roads here. Like, eyes open. Like Those potholes will swallow you yeah, whole. No, it's bad. Um, so now we're near Lusaka and we are deciding where to next. Like I said, it's difficult because places are closed, roads are inaccessible, and on the bike, you know, people say it's fine, but that's an awful bike. Mm. <laughs> Not on a bike. How many k's have we ridden? Over 7,000 yeah, 7, right now? Yeah, 7,200 kilometers. We're on day 39. My joints hurt. My fingers hurt. <laughs> my knees hurt. My back sore. Her back sore. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them below. And any feedback. Um, like I said, we know there's not a lot of talking in this video. Mm. Um, but we'll just... But yeah. from this one, episode four will be from Lusaka onwards. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Enjoy. Bye. Bye.